The following is a presentation of TFNN. 11 seconds. You've got 10 seconds. The countdown going on right now. Morrow. Up to Schultz. Five seconds left in the game. Do you believe in miracles? Yes! Let's go to uh, Ilka in uh, Boston. Ilka, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Steve, seriously, you guys are unbelievable. You are doing wonders for all the traders. Well, thanks. We appreciate that. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the October 7th. Marvelous Monday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I absolutely treasure your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with the tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that's what it's all about. So let's go look at one of our tools. This is the tool I call Perseverance makes the difference between success and defeat. You know, a despondent man who had lost his job and completed several dozen interviews without finding new employment was given the advice to continue looking forward to his next interview. In amazement, he questioned that advice, saying, why try again? The reply, well, that's simple, because with each and every rejection, he was moving a step closer to the job that was waiting for him, he did continue to persevere. He did land that job. Imagine, folks, a goal you strongly desire resting at the summit of a steep and slippery mountain. Next, 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 I want you to imagine a heavy stone placed on your back just before you begin that climb. How do you feel the higher that you climb? Do you feel excited? Maybe tired? Maybe frustrated? Look. If you fail to reach your goal the first time, or even the second, the third, the fourth, what is it that will keep you going? What is it that will keep you going after that all-important goal? That's right. It's called perseverance, because perseverance makes the difference between success and defeat. Perseverance is that voice within saying, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. You know, Thomas Alva Edison became a railroad newsboy at age 12 and at age 15 a telegraph operator in his spare time he studied and performed experiments now this goes back quite a ways folks it cost edison more than forty thousand dollars in failed experiments to produce the first incandescent lamp in 1879 think about that forty grand back then i would say he continued to try and try again how about abraham lincoln he never stopped reaching for his dreams. He had to overcome the death, of his, the death of his mother and his sister when he was a child, the death of his sweetheart, a nervous breakdown, the death of three sons, defeat as a candidate for state legislature in 1832, a failed business partnership, and then a large debt to be paid off after a partner died, defeat as a candidate for Congress in 43 and 44, defeat as a candidate in the Senate in 1985, and as vice presidential candidate, in 1856, I would say that Lincoln continued to try and try again. Folks, only in the dictionary, only in the dictionary does the word success come before the word work. Work hard at your goals. Overcome the obstacles placed in your path, for there will be obstacles, whether they're in your path, on your back, wherever they are. But above all, persevere, because perseverance makes the difference between success and defeat let's go check out the perseverance in these markets out here right now we've got the Dow futures trading off about 116 points out at 14882 we've got the S&P futures trading down by almost 14 points at 1670 and a little bit of change out there Nasdaq futures off 22 points at 3211 and change uh, Russell 2000 off 10 points trading at 1065 King dollar back about 14 ticks trading at 8007 
In the hard currencies, Goldilocks up eight bucks and change, trading at thirteen eighteen. Silver up eighteen cents at twenty one ninety three. Light sweet crude back a buck thirty one right now, trading at that bottom of that uh, consolidation level, out at the one oh two fifty ish range. Quick peek across the uh, globe out here. What do we see over in Europa? Well, you've got the DAX down 77 points, just underneath 1% this morning. The FTSE off 50 points, about three-quarters of a percent over in Asia last night. We had the Nikkei down 170, the Hang Seng off 164. Our call-in number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call. We'd be happy to take a look at your stock charts or anything that you would like. Let's start off by trying to get a feel for the old uh, precipice here inside the S&P futures contract. If we take a look at the daily, it's trading right now at 1670.75. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, thanks so much for doing that. Maybe you're listening on your radio or your mobile device at tfnn.mobi. Remember, the live stream of the show can be obtained by going to the homepage of tfnn.com. On the right-hand side, upper right-hand side, you'll see a button, three smartphones. Click on that. You'll catch the live stream of this, and you'll see that price had dipped down again this morning into the bottom of that rising price channel. That's the rising price channel coming off of the lows here uh, in November, November 16th, 2012 out there. Also, you had the ES Mini getting down at 1663 level. So didn't exactly hit 1663. I suspect that that's what we're going to do during the open here, as we'll see some uh, bears try to push through the door out there. So 1663 and a bit of change is a support level, a support both in horizontal terms, simply because it's a Fibonacci retracement number, the 0.618 level, as well as that rising price channel, which has not been broken. Tested, most certainly, but broken through with any kind of conviction, not as of yet. Will today be the day or are we just simply going to trade in a consolidation zone and a sideways move or are we going to see some kind of a bounce now if this market ever does decide to bounce where would it bounce to well that's pretty simple it would be the 0.618 retracement now from the high to the uh, lows down here that were put in well could be an intraday low today how about the lows that were put in on thursday which was out at 1663 i suspect that's where the market wants to go we'll go take a look at that but the 0.618 level would be about 1702 why do I suspect that that's where price will go? Well, let's go take a look at that EKG. We can see here on the daily chart, by the way, neither oversold nor overbought. So what does that mean? It means the market could go in any direction that it wants. But let's go take a look at the 30-minute futures out here. As we take a look at the 30-minute futures, gapping down last night. Let me get rid of the uh, Fibonacci. Well, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll put them back up there in a, a moment. So gapping down last night, you know, on Friday we had a, a nice little bounce out there, albeit on light volume. The market got into a overbought condition. Coming to the time frame, that 1683 is significant resistance inside the uh, market. Coming into the time frame about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, nice wide-ranging bar coming into that area, gets into an over. Uh, bought uh, condition, works its way off a little bit, pushed higher into about the 3.30 time frame, created a divergent pattern out there that was just simply uh, confirmed here with this little this little dark cloud cover candle that formed as we came into that 3.30 session. That was suggesting that we were going to see lower price. Well, right at the open, we gapped down here uh, as price opened up at a level of about 16.76, of course. You know, if you don't fill in those gaps... And I don't mean that gaps must be filled. I mean fill in those gaps so that you can take a look at the wide-ranging bars. If you take a look at the close on Friday, what I've done is I've created my own little wide-ranging bar because the gaps sometimes visually, they just don't give you all of the information. But if I say that's what we took a look at at the opening, which is what we had out there, a wide-ranging bar. Now, how important is that wide-ranging bar? Why is it that I suggest that maybe we're going to see the markets push lower before they can attempt to push higher. We'll just take a look at the wide-ranging bar that took place here at 3.30 in the morning as Europe was coming on board. What we can see is that price moved down into the extreme, I mean extreme, oversold territory. It had no choice but to work off that condition, and working it off is exactly what it is doing, in this case here, by retracing higher, but not until it takes out that wide-ranging bar could there be any kind of conviction all that it's doing is just doing what it should, which is moving sideways, folks, moving sideways to bouncing up. And that's why it looks to me like what we will see is a push lower in the market before we see a push higher because that oversold condition has worked itself off out there. Now, 
we go take a look at the uh, currency market. Let's go see what we've got going on over inside the uh, currency market as well. We're looking at the daily uh, contract for the uh, continuous contract for the S&P. Uh, the, uh, I'm on the wrong tab out there. I just got to go to the right tab. Let's go take a look at my friend and yours, and that is the euro Japanese yen because this currency pair is the one that does the best job in correlating to the stock price inside the U.S. stock market. And right now, it is traveling below a price channel, a rising price channel. Now, this price channel only goes back into the June 14th area. Those are the blue diagonal lines that you're looking at on my screen. Nonetheless, it's a price channel that is being threatened here. Now, this is a daily chart, so we've got plenty of time left in the day. We can see that prices come back and it's tested at 131 44 level but in this case here it's a little bit more ominous than that because we were talking about that wide ranging bars we looked at on the 30 minute chart for the es mini you want to wait to see you know is price going to be conviction by moving above or below that level well if we take a look here at the uh, euro japanese yen price never should have gotten below that wide ranging bar from uncle ben bernanke day on september 19th below out there 132.30 but voila it did so. It did it as well as it went on uh, Friday as it was coming into the uh, close out there. You can see this morning moving below that area with conviction, getting into the point six one eight retracement level, and breaking, breaking that rising price channel. This here, and one other chart, probably will provide us with a ton, I mean a ton, of information today. And part of that ton of information, well, it's because the Dow is the weak link out here. And with the Dow being the weak link, let's go peek in on IBM, because what we know about IBM as we speak here right now, let me just move over to a different screen here. In IBM, the last trade fired off at 181.60. Folks, I'll pull this chart back here, but IBM has been traveling in a 30-point consolidation zone. The bottom of that consolidation zone, we got to give it just a little bit of room, but the low that was put in, uh, July the, uh, when is it, July? Let me, I need to explode it up a bit here so I can actually get the right date here. July the 12th, that was 181.85. You're trading at 181.60 right now. So you're traveling below that swing point. That's below that black horizontal line. But you want to give it just a little bit of room out here. If we take a look at the most recent swing point that IBM is dealing with here today, that's the swing point from August 28th. The low on that is 181.10. So you're trading slightly above that here in the pre-market. But I suspect that that level is going to be tagged. Now, that swing point only has 3.9 million shares. Coming into it, not too, too shabby. Well, on Friday was a light volume day, and it was really not providing us with a ton of information. No conviction, certainly, behind the move. But on Thursday, as the markets move lower, IBM only moved lower with 3.2 million shares. So a little bit lighter volume out there. What's that make it? Maybe about... Uh, 80% of the uh, volume, maybe about 20, 15 to 20% light out here. So the Euro Japanese Yen, the good old IBM, those are two charts that are going to give us some big information today. 877 We'll be right back. Folks. says you can't take it with you. TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator. Of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Hope everybody out there had a, a great evening. Of course, you know, we had the uh, Navy SEALs at work uh, Saturday evening. Why Saturday evening? Well, they came under uh, cover of that new moon that, that came in. So darkness of the uh, evening out there. In fact, we'll take a look at the uh, full moon. I've got a uh, schedule, a chart out here, the S&P 500 with the uh, new moons, full moons out there. We'll take a look at that. But one of, uh, I think the other chart that we need to really be paying attention to is a beautiful chart for sure. I hope you're watching us on Tiger TV. It's the Russell 2000 weekly futures contract out here. Now it's got three beautiful patterns that uh, completed. These are reversal patterns. These are powerful reversal patterns out here. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, the uh, yellow pattern that you're looking at, that's a 1.618 butterfly pattern. Uh, that was projected at a price level right around the uh, 1050 area. That was also a longer term A to B equals CD, a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. And as that pattern was completing, I mean just perfectly, a three drive to a top pattern. This is on a weekly chart. Now, when we take a look at time, your first drive out here was the uh, trading session the week of March the 15th. Your next trading session was the week of May 24th. And then the, as the pattern completed, was on August the 2nd. Now, not only did it complete, but that very next week, you had nice bearish reversal, nice bearish engulfing candle, follow through on that next week. That said, the price should have at least come, came back all the way down to the uh, bottom 
of the April 19th area, right around the 894. And when price didn't, it said that we had three strong reversal patterns and we had some signals. It told us just how strong these markets were underneath the covers, just how strong these markets were. We saw a breakout of that level the week of September 20th. But there is a nice little silent signal. There is an area of resistance that reared its head. And that was when it formed this doji candle here the week of September 27th. You can see that the open was at 1071.20, the close at 1071.90. That makes a nice little doji in Stevie's window out there. That says the top of that doji, 1080.20. That is the level of resistance inside of the Russell 2000. You can see last week, price tested it, got up over it, but closed below it. So the chart here... Still very bullish. Still very, very bullish. What we do know is that last week, the area of resistance, the top of that doji candle, was tested and it held. If you see a close above that doji, that's 10.80.20. This week, this is a weekly chart. So it doesn't matter if it does an intra-session, meaning intra-week. But if we see on Friday a close above that, folks, you're talking about a a index here you're talking about momentum strength you're talking about something that should be weak that's actually given us the signals that it wanted to be weak and that it will have taken out those strong resistance areas and prices will move higher now not just is it important to pay attention to the russell 2000 but it is also important to pay attention to the nasdaq because we take a look at the nq out here we can see that it too is completing a pattern it completed an a to b a one to one a to b equals cd it, too, completed. This is a weekly chart that we're looking at out here. Now, it created, we're going to call this one a doji candle as well. That's the week of September the 27th, the high of which is 32.37. The close last week was at 32.33, four points away. Four points away. Those are important four points out here. But should you see a close this week above 32.37, this market will not go down. Not a chance. This market is not going to go south without the NASDAQ, without the Russell 2000 participating in it. So we got IBM today. We got the Euro Japanese Yen today. We got the ES Mini up against support. And we've got these two other charts that we need to be paying attention to. And that is the NASDAQ futures on the weekly chart as well as the Russell 2000. Now, if I go back to the uh, Russell 2000, let's do that out here, because Russell 2000, if it gets back below the high from 1062 out there, it'll be back inside the lower part of its range out there. And what will that do? We'll at least go ahead, and I would suggest it will at least go ahead and take the Russell 2000, the futures contract, down to about the 1006 level, and that's if it closes underneath the highs out here, which is that bearish engulfing candle that now should act as support. That is at 1062. If it gets back below that, it'll be in the lower part of the uh, range. Right now, we've got the uh, Dow futures off 130, S&P futures off 15. They're going to make a run for that, uh, what is that, 1663-ish level. The lows from last week out there. We'll see if that's where the bulls are camping out. We'll be right back, folks. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Andy Hecht, the host of the Commodities Hour, recently launched his newsletter service, the Technomental Commodity Report, and only six weeks in, Andy has already recorded a triple-digit winner. Andy advised his subscribers to purchase a long-term call option at 46 cents on July 11th, and then sent out a special update Friday, August 16th, advising his subscribers to close that position at $1.40. That's a 204% profit in just five weeks. The Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht is released each Thursday morning, and right now you can get a month-long free trial to this subscription while locking in the low introductory rate of only $39 a month. Andy Hecht has been a commodities trader for over three decades. Let his experience work for you. Sign up for your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today at TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. The races. We got the Dow down 139, trading out at 14,933. S&P off 14 and a half at 1675. Composite down 31 points at 3776. Russell 2000 off nine points at 1069. Apple up four bucks and change, leading the charge. Well, not leading the charge. The upside leading the charge. The upside is Outer Wall Inc. Red Box. They're up about nine percent this morning. Up five bucks and change. GW Pharmaceuticals up four dollars now. That's up about sixteen percent. Uh, you've got uh, Apple then right behind them up four bucks. Uh, let's see here, some other direction share. CarMax, KMX, up about 81 cents. Tesla Motors up a buck here. To the downside, Visa, they're getting charged some red this morning. They're off nearly 2%, down three bucks and change. Cooper Tire, CTB is a ticker symbol. They're off 12.5%. Atosa Genetics, they're getting the toasted, is what they're getting here, down 50% this morning, off $2.66 out there. They're getting cut in half. Also to the downside, you've got Boeing, uh, probably on the uh, deal where they lost uh, a, a deal to uh, Japan Airlines out there. Uh, so maybe that's why they're trading uh, lower. Well, we can take a look at that stock chart. That's off about a buck, uh, buck sixty-one. IBM now down two bucks at one eighty-two and a bit of change out here. So we covered IBM. You know, we'll peek in on IBM mostly during the uh, next uh, trading hour. We've got Celgene Corp. 
Uh, that's off about a buck sixty out here. Yelp down a buck sixty nine. Our call number eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you give us a call, we can take a look at your stock chart. Let's go take a look at some of the commodity sectors out here. Let's go see what Goldilocks, silver, crude, uh, natural gas, uh, bonds. Let's go see what they are doing on their chart patterns out here. We've got gold that's trading up. Uh, let me see here. What is gold trading up? About nine bucks or so. Seven dollars and. Seventy and nine dollars, yeah, thirteen eighteen. Uh, just really another inside day out here. So traveling uh, sideways. We know that gold did go ahead and break down uh, last week. When was the last week on the uh, on October the uh, first? One, two, three, four, five. So five trading. That was on Tuesday. You know, broke through a support level, bounced right back up very uh, quickly. Now we're just seeing some sideways uh, movement out here. It was neither overbought nor oversold. So it's building some energy to do something. Looks like that building energy may be building energy to make that A to B equals C D down, taking gold into that uh, June twenty eighth uh, swing point. But we'll see what it does out here. Silver, uh, because the point six one eight retracement level so far has held on Goldilocks. So we take a look at uh, silver. Also, the point six one eight retracement level has held. Silver looks a little bit stronger than gold this morning. It's up about one percent, up twenty one cents, trading out at twenty one ninety six out here. Mm, but still, look at these uh, trading sessions. Ever since for the last, this goes takes us back really to September 24th. Take a look at the number of small-bodied, confused, uncertain candles that are out there inside of uh, silver. I can't make bulls or bears feel good out here because its uh, trading range is just dead sideways out here inside of the uh, market. We take a look at light sweet crude. That's not, well, it has been sideways. It's been moving in a sideways consolidation range. Interestingly enough, what is holding light sweet crude in place out here happens to be this all-important trend line. This is a trend line, short-term trend line, coming back into the uh, lows of April 18th. That's a red trend line you're looking. Uh, if you use the price level of 85.61, the next touch point inside light sweet crude being the uh, level of uh, June 24th low, 92.67. See, once you break a trend line or a channel line, price is going to come back and test it. And that's what we have seen take place here. It looked like that light sweet crew, because it was getting back inside that sideways consolidation, that it wanted to move to higher price. But at this stage here, we can see that it's that diagonal resistance line of that trend line that all that so far light sweet crude was testing. If it can't stay back inside that consolidation area, and I'm going to say even though on my screen here the yellow area doesn't extend down to that level, I'm going to just mentally extend it. I'll actually do it on a uh, on a uh, during a break or something like that. But I'm going to say that 102 area really becomes where the make it or break it. Right now it's trading out at 102.05. If you see light sweet crude close below 101.43, uh, it will head all the way down to 99 bucks and potentially further. And if it heads down further and it gets back and said, oh, I didn't mean to do that, let me change that to a, a black, grab something there on my chart, and I uh, didn't realize that that was uh, the tool grabbed it. But let me just change that to black, and that way, if it gets below, well, that didn't work either, did it? Let's try this. Oh, I just need to make it a nice big, there we go, that big bar out there. If, in fact, Light Sweet Crew gets below that, that's a one-year consolidation pattern that it broke out of. I suspect what we actually see is if light sweet crude can get down to 99 bucks, that's going to be your first test, that consolidation area. And then if that happens, if that holds, then we'll see uh, light sweet crude move back up to that 112-ish type range out there. We take a look at uh, bonds. Let's go see how bonds are performing here this morning. Uh, you know, threatening to move higher to get up into that 135 range. They have really kind of petered out here, just really as uh, most of the market, not the Dow, not necessarily the S&P, but uh, just as most of the market here is kind of petered out by moving sideways, so too have bonds out here, at least the 30-year treasure. If we take a look at natural gas, let's see what it is doing here uh, this morning. Natural gas moving higher. So natural gas came down and tested the uh, hammer candle that was formed out here on September 26th. That hammer candle has held. That low is three dollars and sixty-two cents out there, which was also testing a key reversal breakout session from August the eighth. Looks to me like this now might begin the breakout of natural gas. The only problem is, will it form that A to B equals C D up, or will instead natural gas just simply run into resistance? I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the uh, retracement level out here. Will it just simply run into resistance of this descending price channel? that it has been in ever since it made its most recent highs back in the uh, middle of May, well, the early part of May, May 2nd, 
2013. So what I would do if you're in this trade here, what you want to watch is go ahead and use the open of May 2nd. This is a continuous contract that we're looking No, it's not. We're looking at the December contract out here. I take that back. You want to go ahead and use the open, $4.64 out there. I would then go ahead to set up my uh, channel line. I would then go ahead and use the open of the September 18th level right around uh, $3.96 as well. If you're long, you want to see natural gas get above this descending price channel. You want to see it get above it, come back, test it, and just simply confirm that it is now changing trends out here. That was inside natural gas. So if you're and, likewise, if it holds within inside the, uh, this uh, downtrend uh, channel, expect it to come back and probably test the hammer uh, low out there. So you'd be in a kind of a narrow banded sideways trading range inside of natural gas out there. Uh, let's go take a look at the uh, currency market. Let's go see what we've got going on here with the uh, Queen. Let's, in fact, let's switch over to the Euro US dollar currency pair. That gave us, a, oh, I don't like that. That's not a good sign when you're in the middle of a, a radio show. That might mean that uh, Stevie here, let me see what happens when I hit this button. Okay. So I have to uh, restart that uh, software program. So in the meantime, while I'm trying to do that, let me just take a look here at the markets. Of course, I always have a plan B and see out here. But right now, as we take a look at the uh, markets, uh, you've got the uh, Dow trading down 130 points. S&P is off uh, 13. Composites down uh, 26 points out here. Looks like uh, as slow as this thing is closing down, I'm going to have to go to a, oh, there we go. Got that to close. Let me try to reboot that up here. Uh, to the uh, to the downside right now, you've got Google leading the charge off 5 bucks. Amazon is down 445 I'm going to switch over and take a look at the Dow. I want to see what do we have going on inside the Dow, see if there's anything that is uh, green here this morning or that is up. And it looks like all don't, one stock, AT&T, is up uh, 12 cents. Otherwise, the other 29 stocks with inside the Dow to the uh, downside. Now, I've got this back up and going. Let me uh, see if I can uh, go pull up the uh, queen or uh, maybe I might have some kind of uh, some kind of issue inside this tab out here. Uh, no, well, okay, I've got a different tab. So let's take a look at the uh, euro US dollar. Not too bad for a recovery out here. So we take a look at the euro, euro US dollar. Gave us a, a bearish, the first bearish reversal signal that we've seen out here. Now it didn't come at the end of any kind of pattern out here. So it does say that you've got some resistance. Now that's going to be set up based on the October 3rd high out at 1.3576 out here. However, if you get a close, this bearish engulfing candle from Friday out here, if you get a close above 1.3617, and all it's done is so far test that area. However, in the day, if you get a close above that, it makes Friday's bearish engulfing candle very suspect. So suspect that on the uh, daily chart would say, you know what? The euro still wants to move higher and would like to go ahead and take out or go test that 1.3802 uh, level. If we get additional follow-through to the downside, then I suspect what we'll see is we'll see the euro come back and test its old resistance level. That should now be support. That's going to be the highs of June 18th out at about the 1.3414 level. That's on the euro U.S. dollar. Let's go take a look at the uh, euro, I'm sorry, the U.S. dollar Japanese yen currency pair. That has moved all the way back to the point seven eight six retracement, coming off of the low of August the eighth. That level was at ninety five seventy nine, all the way up to the high that was put in on September eleventh, out at one hundred point five nine. No real bulls in place here. So without that being uh, done, in fact, if let's take a look at A to B equals CD down patterns. Let's go see what it is forming. Your A point is going to be that September eleventh high. The uh, B point is going to be your September eighteenth low, and your C point is going to be the September 20th. So one-to-one -one is what it actually is completed out here. Let me get rid of uh, some lines. Actually, I can go ahead and draw in the uh, Gartley pattern. Let me do that. Get rid of the A to B equals CD. Let's do this. Here is the Gartley buy pattern that the U.S. dollar Japanese yen has formed here this morning. However, let's change the color on that because we got another Gartley buy that it set up. Let's make this a nice bright yellow. There's the there's the pattern inside the euro. I'm sorry, inside the US dollar Japanese yen. Now the last time that it made a uh, Gartley buy, that was back on August the uh, 8th out here. So if this area doesn't hold, where is it that uh the US dollar Japanese yen may find some uh, support out here? Let's go take a look at the B to C swing point. Let's go measure where the 1.68 expansion is. It's down just a bit lower, right around 90.57. No, 
can't be 90, 90, let me blow this up here, 96.57, excuse me, so about 96.57, so far the intercession low is 96.79, so between 96.57, 96.79, maybe that's the extent of the move, if you're going to play this, you want to go ahead and wait until you see some kind of bullish reversal signal, we have not seen that yet, you did see a bullish engulfing candle, it did take place here on uh, thir- on Friday, but you can see that it's totally given that up. Suggest lower price. If the point seven eight six Gartley buy fails, we'll see that turn into a, a butterfly pattern. That butterfly pattern would look something like this. Let me go see where the one point two seven two expansion is. Take us all the way back to about the ninety four ish dollar level, ninety four forty nine to be exact. So that's on the U S dollar, Japanese yen. Let's go check in on that Great British pound. Let's go see what it is uh, doing because that did give you a reversal signal, but it didn't complete its pattern. Maybe it's not going to. We had a nice bearish engulfing candle that took place on October 3rd. Big follow through on Friday out here. So we're going to see now. What we can also see is that price was inside a overbought uh, condition. So that most certainly was worked off as it moved back on Friday. But it does have a larger A to B equals CD that would complete at the buck 63 level. But that pattern right now, a bit suspect, because the bears have shown up inside of the uh, great British pound out here. Uh, I don't see the trade here as of uh, yet. Maybe if we go take a look at an intraday chart, let's go do that. Let's go see. Maybe there is a uh, Gartley sell pattern that is setting up here. That's the Euro-Japanese yen. But let's go take a look at the great British pound U.S. dollar. So let's go see what it is doing. So as price moved lower out here, Back on Friday, you can see it did make a 1.618 expansion. It did it on less relative strength out there. So that began the uh, reversal that we saw uh, Friday at about 5 p.m. That's where things began. Now what we can see here is price has made a 1.272 expansion uh, of a, a swing point. So it's actually set up a butterfly, not a Gartley cell pattern. That butterfly pattern looks like this. We'll go ahead and we'll color it in for you on the uh, screen and uh, there is, well, that's not a good butterfly pattern. Let me get rid of that. Here's what the butterfly pattern looks like as I go ahead and anchor to the exact points out here. And you had, not only did you just have a butterfly pattern, you also got a little reversal sign right here. So this is probably the uh, point at which we'll find out whether the, uh, whether the signals that we got on the daily chart last Thursday and Friday whether those are going to hold true because you did get a bearish engulfing here right now. This says that the move higher should be over. says that you ought to at least see price pull back inside the uh, Great British Pound U.S. dollar to about the 1.604 1. uh, level. But we'll, we'll, we'll pay attention to see if this, in fact, butterfly pattern here holds. Maybe it also is a Gartley pattern at the same time. Let's take a look at it. Let's come off of, now it's a 30-minute chart that we're looking at. So we've come down to a 30-minute chart. Let's go see if there's actually a Gartley sell pattern as well as a butterfly sell. We're going to use the swing point high from 2 o'clock in the morning on October 4th out at the 161.73 level. We'll go all the way down to low that was put in, and it is, in fact, also a Gartley uh, sell pattern. So we've got two sell patterns that are completing right in the area where price had moved up to. I'll go ahead and I'll draw that pattern in for us. And that is your round. I should put that in yellow. So you can see here was the projected pattern for the SLs inside of the Great British Pound U.S. dollar. Two reversal patterns and you've got the candle confirmation. you got to love it. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Are you ready to ride the next bull market wave? Catch the Chapman Wave. Using the Chapman Wave methodology, Basil's very comprehensive daily newsletter, The Opening Call, gives the short, intermediate long-term analysis for the key indexes. In his Trader's Corner, he gives a brief market summary and expectation for the day with possible trades, both long and short, which are reviewed daily. A position subscriber sold recently for a 42% on part, plus a 64% on rest, and Hertz Global as a core position for six months before exiting the position. A current position, entered as a turnaround company with good technicals based on Basil's waveform, is trading up to 170% of its entry point as a portion sold earlier for a 21% gain. Subscribers to the opening call can see the Chapman Wave techniques demonstrated and explained daily to educate investors. To get your two-week free trial to the opening call, just visit the front page of T. FNN.com. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Have you subscribed to The Gold Report yet? On Wednesday, August 14th and Thursday, August 15th, Tom O'Brien advised his Gold Report subscribers to close out six of their nine open positions, all winning trades ranging from a 10.69% profit to an incredible 48% profit in just one equity. With the 600th weekly Gold Report issue fast approaching, Tom O'Brien brings an incredible wealth of knowledge and experience to the gold market and the equities within the industry. That's almost 12 years since this past powerful newsletter first began and right now you can get a 30-day free trial to the gold report by visiting tfnn.com make sure you're a subscriber as this volatile gold market makes its way back into positive territory after declining all the way from $1,900 to under $1,200 an ounce in only two years get your 30-day free trial today by visiting tfnn.com Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. The uh, Dow's off about 120 points right now. S&P down 11. When we began the show, I did mention that... Uh, we would go take a look at that uh, full moon, new moon chart of mine. So uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. Had the uh, new moon coming in on uh, Saturday, just as the seals were storming the uh, beaches out there. Of course, they were doing it underneath the darkness of that new moon. So that coming in on Saturday, uh, if we take a look at this chart, and this chart goes back uh, quite a ways. I'll just pull this back from the uh, lows back in November of 2012. It's got every full moon and uh, new moon identified on here now as we take a new moon coming in here uh, again over the weekend last time we saw a new moon that was on september the uh, 5th the market was moving up into it so no way to really say that that new moon really did anything out here if we take a look at the uh, full moon from august uh, 21st the market was moving down it did hold for a level of about uh, four days well three three days including the uh, date of the uh, full moon and the market went ahead and crushed right through that made a lower low back on August 28th. The most recent full moon, that did, in fact, September 19th, that did, in fact, mark a high out there. So the question is, with this new moon coming in, in fact, I should go ahead and just mark it on my uh, chart out here as long as I'm inside this uh, tab. So I think that what well, today's the 7th, so that must have been the 5th out there. So we got uh, October the 5th, 10, 5, 13. We'll go ahead and mark this on my uh, chart. We can pay attention to it tomorrow. So the question becomes... Oh, not just tomorrow, 
but is the uh, low that is being put in either the low from Friday, the low of uh, today, we would go ahead and use the low of today, is this becoming, is the uh, full moon, new moon cycle, you know, starting out. Uh, not a lot of evidence to necessarily suggest that it did. You can see this has been a real hit or miss because if we go back now, you did have a new moon back here on August the uh, 6th out there, and that, in fact, did mark a high. So that one works. So you've got one that did, one that didn't. I would say, you know, we're 50-50 at best out here. Uh, the moon, full moon uh, that took place here on July 22nd, that was really, uh, you know, that high was taken out. The market was moving up, so it only lasted for about four days, four to five days or so. You had this new moon here in the middle of July, July 7th. That did absolutely uh, nothing out here. So you can see, you know, what you want to take a look at is some of the other patterns. You like to utilize these uh, lunar aspects, in my opinion, as triggers if, in fact, other patterns are setting up inside the uh, marketplace. So what we do know is that if we go back and we take a look at the uh, daily charts here, let's do this. Let's get back and uh, take a look at, just kind of summarize where we're at for the uh, day at the uh, moment. Uh, let's take a look at the McClellan Summation Index, as well as the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Uh, the volume oscillator, the price oscillator, both below zero. That's bearish. You would need 500 net advancing issues today in order for the bulls to take control. Right now you've got uh, declining issues. It's about a little over four to one declining issues to advancing issues. So you got a net minus 17.55 out there. That suggests lower prices coming at us. And then the New York Stock Exchange would not surprise me now for us to move down to the 94, 98 level. We're at 96.03 right now. So the bears certainly have control there. We know if we take a look at the uh, VIX index, that is well above the 50-day uh, simple and exponential moving average. That's where carnage is uh, done inside the markets anytime price is above that 50-day out there. If we go take a look at the uh, futures, uh, we'll take a look at the uh, ES Mini here. See if I can pop that up on my screen here on the daily real quickly. That is run into support if, in fact, breaks that uh, price channel line. That will send prices down to probably about the 1646 level. And the chart right now that says, you know, any bounce that we're seeing in the market, not so fast. It's this Euro Japanese yen. It's breaking its channel line. It eventually leads the markets. Folks, it's marvelous Monday if you're off to start your day. Have a great day. If not, I'll see you in a few. Take care, folks. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past.